you know, we're seeing the word consumer more and more with regard to health services. Uh, do you think that's accurate today? Or do, do you think we have, uh, you, uh, well, first of all, do you think it's accurate? And then second, do you think it's good for healthcare to have consumers? I've heard physicians say to me, I, you know, I don't want to have consumers because sometimes I have to say very challenging, very difficult things to them. And, you know, they might choose to go to another doctor just because I said, hey, you know, you got you have to do these things. And, you know, it, it's, to some extent, having that, that tight relationship uh, enables you to say the hard things when you need to say the hard things and whatnot. So do you think it's accurate and do you think it's good for healthcare? You know, the, the, the current consumer discussion is, I think you were alluding to it also, um, similar to the discussion of client. Do you call a patient a patient or a client? That um, I heard a lot through medical school in the late 80s and early 90s. And so I would argue this. I would argue the intent behind consumerism in that discussion is incredibly important. And I would say most of us are spending time thinking about that. At the same time, I think we're probably overplaying its importance. And I'm sure that there are other people who would love to disagree. The reason is that there are parts of healthcare that are elastic and parts that are completely inelastic. You have a broken bone. You're just a very different consumer than when you have a broken down car. The more appropriate analogy may be a broken down car that your daughter is in on the highway at night in the rain. Right. You know, and so your behaviors are going to be incredibly different about consumerism based on the underlying situation. And so I think we, we hear a lot about consumerism for the more elastic part of healthcare, the, the primary care when you're not really that sick, or the, um, uh, the lifestyle care. And I don't want to diminish when I say lifestyle, but aesthetics or things like that. And then there are other parts that why they may not originally um, come across as uh, inelastic, uh, um, physical therapy, a uh, voice therapy, when it really impacts your job, when you're a teacher, a pilot, a professor, and you can't get your words out, going to the speech pathologist is incredibly important. And so, I don't think that the latest mobile app that allows the consumer to pick and choose and disrupt healthcare is going to happen as quickly as some people may think. I, I, I saw one vendor discuss the fact that millennials today have no loyalty for their doctors or their health systems, and I suspect part of that is accurate. So it could be just an age difference. But when people do become sick or develop a chronic disease or develop one of those inelastic items that I've talked about, I don't think consumerism, I don't think people with really bad abdominal pain, that might be appendicitis or might be the onset of ulcerative colitis, will tend to look for the least expensive five-star clinic two miles from their home where they can drive through, you know, we can just take this analogy so far, and yet at the same time, when we talk about patient experience, family engagement, I, I think there's some really good things there that in the past, certainly during my training, we never thought about. Who cares what the food is? You're in the hospital. So All I right, think so there are elements of this that are very good for the overall experience, but I think we overplay it. 